Thanks, Pooja. Um, and uh, it, it's been a fiery and a, a interesting session. Public finance sounds very boring, but inevitably becomes uh, an enormous amount of fun. Um, let me add to that a little bit. Uh, I think uh, starting from what Ratin said, uh, the, the challenges to India's public finances are not new. Uh, they might be heightened in the context of a, an economic slowdown, but they are not new. These are trends that have uh, actually, I think, been visible for many, many decades. Uh, some trends, like centrally sponsored schemes, date back to the 1950s and 60s. Um, and over time, uh, the, depending on the particular economic moment, elements of these have got heightened. I think the important thing to recognize, especially after the 1991 economic growth momentum, uh, as citizen expectations of government began to transform. They transformed because the excuse that government is too poor to ensure that basic rights of citizens are met was no longer a valid political argument. That's the power of democracy and one that we must accept. The question mark is how did government choose to respond? It chose to respond by recognizing and the 2000s uh, onward was a phase when I think this was at its most acute. It chose to respond by recognizing that there is, of course, political mileage to be gained from responding to this demand. And that political mileage should be gained in the context of deepening decentralization of politics. Don't forget that in 1999, political scientists began to refer to India's politics and national elections as a series of state elections that come together to form the national election. Coalition governments became uh, very much part of the day. And it was natural for national political parties the BJP was in power through the NDA in the early 2000s up till 2004, followed by the Congress, which heightened it, to then look at increased central expenditure to respond to these demands of citizens on what were essentially constitutionally state subjects. So if you look at the last two five-year plans, the 11th and the 12th five-year plans, you will see a significant increase of central government expenditures on state spending. And that's one of the reasons why, when the 14th Finance Commission went out and started doing its state visits, it heard again and again repeatedly, including from our Prime Minister, a desire to get the center out of the way on what are fundamentally state subjects. But politicians are smart, and our politics is always very responsive to the particular context in which it functions. And as Indian politics decentralized in the late 90s and 2000s, you also got extremely powerful chief ministers across all political parties. Our current prime minister is a good example of that too. Powerful chief ministers also aggregated power within their chief minister's offices, a trend that continues till today. And the federal balance was maintained by powerful chief ministers and these op opposition political parties to whatever political coalition existed at the center, taking central money, subsidizing for their own expenditures. So if you look at state budgets over the 90s and 2000s, you will see that the bulk of the increase of expenditure on core public goods, health and education being really important examples, state governments began to use central government to substitute for their own expenditures. Therefore, in some senses, divesting themselves of their own responsibilities. So states are as much culprits as the center is. And at the same time, drawing on central schemes to implement them, because the powers of implementation stay with states, getting full political credit when they wanted it, when they did it well. Tessin, you should remember that Narega, when it first came out, it was called Narega in 2004, it was BJP-led governments, Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh, Chhattisgarh, that were the front runners of implementing it far better than Congress governments. And they took full political credit for it. And when things did not go well, then parties would blame the parties at the center and the centrally sponsored schemes. So 2007, I think, UP election, Mayawati blamed uh, Congress party for not giving Narega funds. Congress party blamed Mayawati for not implementing Narega funds. That's how the federal balance was very nicely maintained. Use central funding to draw on political credit when it's needed. Use central funding to substitute for your own state expenditure, which was also necessitated by FRBM which has led to another fallout, which I'll come to in a second, and ensure that you can blame the center when necessary, and it suited central government too, because things don't get implemented because states don't want to implement it. But in the narrative of, fiscal, uh, of the fiscal story, uh, centrally sponsored schemes were always a problem, which led to the 14th Finance Commission momentum to enhance devolution to states from 
a first principle basis, that seems to be an extremely sensible thing. The Indian state, for how large it is, is just shockingly centralized. Local governments, Ratan will anno get annoyed with me for repeating this, he doesn't like local governments as much as I do. Local governments consistently kept out of the picture. It is absurd in a country as large as India that New Delhi will decide literally what the cost of paying a sweeper in a school is. Literally, if you look at finance rules or centrally sponsored schemes, you will see this. State governments complained, got what they wanted. Central government very willingly gave it because it fed, ni fed nicely into the narrative of cooperative federalism, states being drivers of change. You get the planning commission out of the way that was a symbol of centralization, replace it with Niti Aayog. But then the central government too suddenly realizes that that means I don't have control over expenditure. How do I take political credit? In the context of a politics where citizen aspirations are growing, demands of service delivery are excessive, and political competition is heightened. And that's why you see, despite the move to devolve, over time, and Ratan's calculations show this quite well, between 2014-15 all the way to 18-19 to RE, centrally sponsored schemes that were the villain of the piece and the reason why fiscal devolution was enhanced, at one, at, uh, one of the important reasons why fiscal devolution was enhanced in the 14th Finance Commission. In fact, expenditure on central schemes increased did not decrease, and Ministry of Finance very cleverly changed the sharing ratio, so state contribution to centrally sponsored schemes increased rather than decreased, creating also a nice political win-win where credit claiming was strong at the center, and you see that every single welfare scheme is a prime minister scheme, Modi ne toilet diya hai, Modi ne uh, gas cylinder diya hai, Modi ne sarak banwai hai, state government credit claiming has, has decreased significantly, but centrally sponsored schemes are alive and well, and uh, uh, essentially centralization has become stronger. Meanwhile, local governments has almost completely fallen off the picture as state governments demanding decentralization from central governments refuse to decentralize further to local governments. It is, a, uh, Raja Chelaya, I think, said that everybody in the Indian public finance system loves decentralization only up to their level. So <laughs> states will gather and demand from center but states will not give to local governments and ensure that the context is such that local governments are unable to mobilize and demand from states. State finance commissions have, not been, have, have now more or less become completely defunct, fundamentally under, undermining core federal principles. To my mind, the most critical public finance question and governance question that India faces today is what level of government should perform what function. This is a public finance challenge, this is a political challenge, this is also an administrative challenge and one that has to be debated across parties. It is a challenge that also is confronted in the context of the reality of our real politics, where across parties, politics, party politics is extremely centralized. And that's where having a really serious debate about the nature of public finances, about decentralization, and about the challenge of the center becoming smaller by virtue of the nature of center state uh, and, and taxing, as Ratin explained, uh, remain strong even as the center is politically making a whole lot of unfunded promises. In times of fiscal stress like we have today, this becomes heightened because the politics means that the center will encroach on state finances to fund its own unfunded, unfundable mandate. And you're beginning to see this not only in careful management uh, of budget numbers and figures, you're also beginning to see this in shifts that have happened in the terms of reference of the 15th Finance Commission. Lastly, I wanted to just make one last submission. When the Planning Commission was shut down, everybody across the board was quite delighted. There was a moment when the Planning Commission existed. It represented a certain kind of centralization of, uh, of economic policy that was no longer relevant. We shut it down because India was moving forward towards a more market-oriented economy. We were going to look very different. But we didn't give enough thought to the unintended consequences of closing institutions uh, and creating vacuums. Niti Aayog was set up to pursue the goals of cooperative federalism and states being engines of growth. But what we didn't realize is that the Planning Commission performed a very critical public finance function by serving as a coordinating body for centers and states to negotiate planned funds. Now, everybody across the board felt that plan, non-fund plan, fund distinctions are a 
absurd. They create opacity and complexity in the public finance management system. Absolutely. State chief ministers hated having to come to the central government and beg the planning commission for their plan funds. Absolutely. But it created a certain degree of, uh, of, of predictability in financing. It also created a platform where some degree of negotiation could take place. Absent that, and absent a midterm fiscal framework, which has not been put in place for a multiple set of factors, you have created an institutional vacuum in which line departments and ministries of finance are determining expenditure. States are making their budgets without predictability of five years, and therefore are second guessing and third guessing, and we can have a separate panel on how budgeting actually takes place in India. We've been following budgets for social policy at least very closely, and it is the most scary thing. It's better not to know than know how, ba how badly we treat our public finances across political parties, across decades. Uh, that's a larger conversation to be had. But, in, but absent this, the Ministry of Finance is incentivized to withhold expenditure. That is the role of a finance ministry. The line departments are incentivized to play lord and master over state governments. That is the nature of, of line departments. State secretaries are looking to move to Delhi, so have a different incentive structure. And state secretaries for line departments hate having to go with their begging bowl to their finance departments with their uh, peers and beg for money for, to fund their education, their health, and so on and so forth, creating a system in which centralization and now opaque centralization persists. And that is the death knell of effective quality public expenditure. DBT is a platform. It is not a solution. Expenditure of, on leakage is an open question because I can tell you CAG has calculated that there is 1.73, 1.76 are magic numbers that CAG produces all the time and now RBI also produces. Something about that number is very relevant to public finance in India. It shows up everywhere. That was the revenue loss. That's what RBI has. That's what CAG also said is about, about, within that ballpark is float that is sitting across the entire banking structure of government across different government departments because governments don't spend center down to panchayat, don't spend, owing to a whole host of problems within our public expenditure management system. So if we really want to solve the problem of leakage and induce efficiency and improve outcomes, public expenditure management reform, not DBT, is the answer to our problems. I'll stop.